Gosh, I am so on time today. Wait, let me wear my glasses so I can look more like... Ew. <laughs> All right, one person, 63 people. 415 people, 1,399, 3,008, 3,400, 3,600, 3,800, 4,100, 4,200, 4,256, 4,300. I'm gonna stop. Hey guys, what's up? It's your girl, Diara. I am super, super excited. Today is the first episode of Does Black Lives Matter to You? Um, I cannot wait. I've been literally researching all night and I've been crying a lot as well because it is not easy to see what have been done to my people, literally. I cried so much. I don't know if you guys can tell. I don't have no makeup on right now. I look like a kid, but I do not care, literally. So, today I'm gonna have a few guests with me. They're gonna, you know, they're gonna, I'm gonna call them one by one. They're gonna come and talk to me and talk to you guys as well. And yeah, so today's subject is gonna be defunding the police. I don't know if you guys know what defunding the police means, but basically it simply means that the money given to the police departments, which sometimes are hundreds of millions of dollars, take that money and put it into the hood, put it into services that helps, you know, services like health facilities, schools, stuff like that, that actually can help our black men in the hood to actually make it and actually have less crimes and less um, prison incarcerations so I would really want you guys to go ahead and watch 13th on Netflix my sister put me into it and I promise you guys that I cried so much when I watched that documentary that I cannot even tell you how I felt and I cannot tell you how much rage how much I cannot tell you how I feel right now about that documentary, about everything that has been done to my people. You would need to watch that to understand. So I have a few guests that I'm going to be calling one by one today. Um, if you guys want to want to get in the live as well, I'm going to be calling some fans. Um, I want everybody to be part of this. This is just the first episode. I don't want it to be too long, too extended. I don't want to talk about everything at once because the second episode is gonna be hot, you guys. The second episode is gonna be hot. We're gonna be talking about a lot of things that most people are scared to talk about. So I'm gonna go ahead and try and call my first guest today and we would be talking about the subject which is defunding the police, so. Let's go ahead and call. Somebody. All right, you guys, um, let's go ahead and call another one. While we wait for our guest, I want you guys to tell me oh, how. Oh, hi! Hi? How are you? Gosh, I'm so cute. Thank you. I can do like, First time I've worn makeup in like two months, but. Oh, wow. Well, you look cute. You look really, really Thank good. You. How so are you, you What? How, how are you holding on? How's quarantine? Um, I mean, it sucks, but. <laughs> I definitely. mean, yeah, but yeah. It what definitely, about you? Definitely does. Well, I really, really miss you, though. I know, I do, too. I have to come out and see you once I'm all better. And for sure, for sure. So I just want to know, and I'm pretty 
sure every, everybody that's actually watching us actually want to know as well. How do you feel about the situation? How do you feel about, you know, to nowadays and what we're talking about, what the media are talking about, what's happening outside the protests and everything? How do you feel about that? I mean, honestly, like, it's just such a dark time, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm, I mean, I'm appalled. I feel horrible that, you know, everything keeps going on and it just makes me so sad. Like my heart just, I mean, it just honestly just hurts. And Definitely. I mean, yeah, I just feel like we just need to love everyone and, you know, keep listening and learning. And I mean, yeah, like taking constructive criticism. Exactly, especially that because a lot of people don't know what's going on because they don't know the story of black people. Um, they don't really understand us as much as people who actually learn about our stories and seen what's going on. So um, especially that, you know, those people need to educate themselves and do some research and see what's going on because this is actually, you know, our children, um, they're going to learn about this. They're going to learn about school and it's like, it's not just nothing. As long as you're not outside protesting, you should be researching and yeah, you know. listening, learning, you know, taking what, taking what one of your friends tell you, turn it around and, you know, teach one of your other friends what you've learned. Exactly. Yeah. Well, um, I'm really, really happy to have you today. Um, you're one of my really, really good friends. And, I love you. you know, I cannot just do it without inviting you here because I know that this is really, you know, a big thing to you as well, because you're always telling me about, um, you know, the fact that you're educating yourself, you're always posting stories, doing everything you can to support us. And I see that about that as well. Thank you. No, I mean, I, I mean, I should have been, you know, my whole life. But I mean, that's the sad part is, you know, along with white privilege is I don't think, you know, a lot of people realize that they have that, that they were born with that privilege because of their skin color and it's I mean it's disheartening it sucks definitely that I will just I mean I yeah I will never understand but I mean I will just I will always be in the learning stage you know I'm in the learning stages now 10 years from now my whole life you know I'm always going to be learning I'm always you know I'm always wanting to know more but all yeah. right I mean I'm here I'm here for you yeah I know that I love you girl <laughs> I love you too yeah I have question for you um i know you are white you've been born white um you have a lot of white friends if i'm not wrong um you know you went to school you you know you you've lived basically your whole life uh, being white right so mm -hmm. what do you think about white privilege and how can you uh, de denounce that like how what can you say about white privilege i mean like what i have to say is anyone that doesn't think they have white privilege is wrong <laughs> um and like I said before, like I'm just sure most people aren't aware of their born given privilege. And, you know, I think it's just, I mean, now is the perfect time, you know, to, to understand that white privilege that you have. And I mean, try and use it to your advantage to, to speak out on platforms and have uncomfortable conversations. And like there's, so Warren Buffett, he's the third richest person in the world. And he said that his number one key to success is being born white, male, and in the United States. And that's, that's serious privilege. So, I mean, like, to put it in, you know, simple words, that's what, that's what white privilege is. And how does that make you feel? Like, how, how, do you, how does it make you feel to be sitting there and, and seeing that some people in the world are treated wrong because of their skin color and that you view in it? How, how does that make you feel? I mean, it makes me feel horrible. I feel horrible that I can't do more. Like I just, I want to do everything in my power, every shape and form and to try and, you know, help mm -hmm. and make it so that everyone's equal because it's, I mean, we're in 2020. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so it's just kind of like, it's just shocking, you know? And like the definition of insanity is, is it's um, in order for uh, like, you expect um, different outcomes for the same actions. And so to put in different words that the result is like we just need a massive change and we need to change those rules that we've had for hundreds of years because 
with those rules, we're going to be having the same outcomes, no matter what. So we all need to come together. We need to be able to change those rules, change, you know, change how society is so that, you know, so the outcomes can be different. Perfect. I, I really, really like that. I really like that. So what do those white people out there, silent, being trans, totally transparent, being not showing any emotion at all after seeing that video of George Floyd dying, like literally screaming, I can't breathe for nine minutes. What can you say to people? I mean, thinking about that video, that's, I mean, that's when, I mean, I was just crying. I was crying the whole entire time. But um, what I have to say to, you know, just everyone that's silent is if you're silent because you're uncomfortable, then good, you know, like, good, that's perfect. This is the perfect time to speak out and be uncomfortable, please. And I mean, and if you're silent because you're, you, you don't understand, you don't know enough, then, you know, talk to black people in your community. Exactly. Research, listen, learn until you have enough information to, to speak out, whether you have one follower or, you know, 20 million, it's, it will help get the word out. It will help spread, it will help you know, show that you're supporting, show that you're um, there for them, showing that, you know, being, knowing that you will never understand, but you're here for them. And, and yeah, I mean, I mean, in the end, you know, I just think that everyone, we all need to come together and, mm-hmm. and demand change. And, and also I have something to say, you know, for everyone saying, you know, the all lives matter. It's like, <laughs> no shit. <laughs> no one said, no one said the all lives don't matter. Mm-hmm. It's just like, if someone's house was burning, you mm-hmm. wouldn't say, what about my house? Or what about their house? Oh my goodness. <laughs> you'd, be like, <laughs> you'd be like, no, like I'm here to help your house, the house that's burning. Mm-hmm. And I mean, and I made that mistake. I did a post and I did I did the hashtag Black Lives Matter, then I did the hashtag All Lives Matter. And, you know, because I'm open to constructive criticism, someone DM'd me and told me, and they're like, you know what? Like, this isn't, no one said that. And then they told me, you know, they gave me information, they gave me analogies. And I was like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe, you know, I didn't know that. And, you know, I was just being dumb. And I, you know, I, I didn't research before I used that hashtag. And, but now I know I'm open to constructive criticism. I took it. I thanked that girl that DM'd me and, you know, I took it off. And now I turn it around and I teach other people, you know, that are saying that what I learned, you know, so everyone makes mistakes, but you know, in the end, we all just need to be kind to each other, love each other and just know no one's perfect and, you know, speak out. Exactly. Especially speaking out, especially because I don't, for me, honestly, I'm going to be really honest, really, really honest. I just feel like the people who are totally transparent right now, especially the white people who are literally not saying anything about the situation. And even though they see that some of the situation makes not, does not make sense at all. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. I just feel like those people are totally racist. That's it. Yeah. I mean, I... <laughs> I had a, I mean, I called, I called one of my guy friends, um, I think it was about a week ago, and I mean, he told me that he was just silent, and he didn't, you know, he said it made him uncomfortable, and he said that he just didn't, you know, he didn't, not care, but he, he just didn't care enough, I guess, to speak about it, or, you know, people wanting their feet to go back to normal, or, I mean, I just, I, I'm, I'm done with it. I mean, yesterday I went through my following and I unfollowed everyone that's been silent. Like, I'm like, I just don't care. I, I mean, if you're my friend before, I'm sorry. Like, I'm just, I'm unfollowing because we don't have the same standards that, you know, the, you should have, like you should have that. You should know. Mm-hmm. I just have one more question for you, Gigi. So you've heard, um, on the media, people talking about defunding the police, which means taking so much because the police is getting so much money. The police departments, they're yeah. getting hundreds of millions of dollars. We don't, they don't even know where that money goes. Some of the police, like people that are working right now, they, I, I've, I've listened to the radio. I've heard some of them calling on the radio talking about, we don't even know where that money goes. So 
don't you are you do you do you agree with the uh, subject defunding the police or is there anything else you would say about that subject no i mean i agree with that i've been seeing a lot of um a lot of people both ways being really controversial and i think what um people need to understand i mean i don't know like statistics or numbers you know and i i mean i'm not afraid to say that i just i don't know i haven't educated myself enough in that subject But I mean, for the most part, what what we're trying to do and what everyone is saying by defund the police is take, you know, not not all of the money, not every single penny, just take a lot of the money and and give it to people that can overlook the police. So police aren't looking at other police make, um, you know, do transparency so that the police can see. I mean, so that they everyone can see their records that they're public. So no one can make mistakes because there's no room for mistakes when you're, you know, in that, in that um, workforce and, and, you know, education, social workers, you know, give it so that we can have less crime, less police brutality. Mm -hmm. And I mean, yeah. So yeah, I totally agree with it. Well, thank you so much, Gigi, for joining the live today. I really appreciate you really appreciate how involved you are in the black lives matter movement i've seen you posting a lot of stories doing a lot doing actually everything you can which is a very very nice from you um uh, thank you for joining this live it was a no thank you <laughs> it was a pleasure talking to you i cannot wait to see you so i know i'm excited yeah thank you seriously thank you so much like I mean, honestly, like, I'm so happy that I can, I can share and discuss and learn with you. And I mean, Diara, I'm, I'm seriously, I'm so proud of you, you know, like for using your voice and your platform and like going against the social norm, you know, making people mad. I love that. I love it. I love that you're, you know, I just, I love it. And I mean, I'm just, I seriously am. I'm so humbled to call you one of my closest friends. So thank you. Well, thank you, Gigi. We love you so, so much. Love you. Everybody loves you. Everybody was, I've seen the comment down there, and I'm pretty sure they're all going to go ahead and follow you and see all the work you're doing for us. I, I haven't been able to read ADHD. I'd be like, ugh. I was trying to speak. I want to be able to, yeah. So, but yeah, so thank you so much. I'm going to go ahead and add. Yeah, thank you. But um, we'll get in touch later on. All right. Okay, bye. Thank you. Bye. Nice day. So that was Gigi, you guys. Um, that was our first guest. We've we've talked about a lot, basically, not just the subject, which is defunding the police, but other subjects touching George Floyd, um, white people who are not speaking, um, and other 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 subject. And I just want you guys to know that there are a lot of white people out there who are very dedicated to the BLM movement, who are doing whatever they can. I'm seeing a lot of stories. I'm seeing a lot of posts. I'm seeing a lot of support. So thank you to all the people who are supporting Black people in this dark time. Now I'm going to try to go ahead and call the second guest, who's Malik Sek. Malik Sek, if you're online, please text me right now so I can know and I can add you in the live right now. Other than that, If you guys, if you guys, if you guys have any questions, if you guys want to get in touch with the live as well, fans um, or other people, friends, um, you guys are welcome as well. I'm gonna actually go ahead and try and call somebody. Um, let me see. All right, the second guest is online. Let's wait for him. Hey, how are you? Hey, I'm good. How you doing? I'm good, and you? I'm good. I'm great. How's your day going? I'm um, pretty good. Pretty good, actually. Yeah. Keeping up with everything. Yeah. So, Mike, I have yeah. a, I have a few questions for you about the BLM movement. Um, yeah. I live in Canada, but you've heard about what's going on um, in in America right now. Um, it's 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 very tragic. Um, it's 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 heartbroken. And as a black community, I know that I know how you must feel right now. So um, how do you feel? How do you feel? I just want to hear that. You know, this, 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 this whole time is like so emotionally charged. Like 
you you go from like seeing seeing things that really break your heart to seeing things that actually give you back hope and then going back to seeing a lot of things that are like it's a mix of emotions that makes you feel like oh like this is really like a lot of emotions to take in at the same time and you you like oh these are really dark times but then you you realize that with with the with all the um with all the chances that we have right now as a as like as being as being young being able to have platforms where we can share what we think being able to just speak up it is a time where we have to share a lot because we can share a lot and we just like we um it is a time it is a dark time yes but it is also a time where we should seize the opportunities that we have to be able to like to try to do our best and just make changes because like right now is the best time to do so and so like i feel i feel i feel I feel sad about all this but I also feel happy to have the chance to be able to be part of the people that can make a change. Mm. I yeah. think mostly very very lucky to mm. I be able to speak up and yeah. uh, uh and you know protest say what's making us uncomfortable and not being killed mm. for that because yeah. you know, when you go back to story to to history you can see that the movement black panther that actually you know raised their voice at first uh, to talk about what's happening to the black community in america you know mm-hmm. you've seen some of them uh, has been shot in their house killed you know some of them went to prison for absolutely no reason they've been charged for being dangerous for being armed um just because they stand up to call everybody and to make everybody come together no matter if it's black people latino white people and now you know, you know yeah. this is this is just um that is just the perfect example of the of the system making sure that only white people are at the top mm-hmm. only white people are actually being on top of everything and just like keeping it that way as much as they can like they're doing their best to do so and like you get to a point where these people are actually um these people are actually like right now they know that it is not it is not able like they're not able to go out and kill people like they used to cuz like you would be able to kill people in somewhere in California and someone in Alabama would not know about it but right now today when you kill a person uh 20 minutes later the whole world knows about it and so the whole world is uh, is actually able to speak up and say, we're filming yeah. You know, yeah, we're filming now. It's exactly that. Like uh-huh, we have the power to actually say, "Yo, you know what? Like we are actually not going to accept this no more." Mm-hmm. And that is and that is what we are we are in right now. We are in this moment where we should not like we are mad, but we 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 have to use that madness to actually turn it into the energy we need as I told you the other day because like we need this energy that we have as madness to turn it into um the dr- the driving force that will actually push us forward to be able to speak up and do whatever we want to do mm-hmm. and and be and and actually let the world know that yo did you know what like oppression is done cuz like no no people actually deserve to be oppressed it's not only black people but everybody every other person every other uh minority group should have their say as much as any other one So it's not about it's not about you know, not not being oh I'm white I have all the chances or I'm white I have I have privilege where when I'm when I'm latino or when I'm black or when I'm anybody anything else it's a problem to live in to live in this world in the 21st century which is not which is makes no sense actually Yeah definitely not definitely not and um there is this word that comes back over and over and over again which is when people speak about the uh, the uh, BLM movement which is black mm-hmm. and some of them use this a lot to say um black lives never mattered black lives um do not matter and black lives will not matter until this and that or this and that and what i truly say about that is that it's bullshit it's, it, it is bull- it because slavery was only for 400 years mm-hmm. only 400 years life has been going on for way more than 400 years yeah. black people was wealthy there was wealthy there was emerging emerging the, they were they were they they had their empire they had their, know, their yeah that that is actually what is being said because people are actually talking about how the the one man that we know was the wealthiest in history was mm-hmm. black mm-hmm. he was he was black he was from mali he was the king and he actually got he was so rich that he would 
he would give money he would give like offer gold to white people mm-hmm. and that is what that is what actually uh, got them to realize that we had we had something big in our continent our grands were rich and so they were like yo you know what let's go there but let's go there they did not respect the rules of going to into somebody's house because when you go into somebody's house you wait for them to tell you sit here you don't just like act like you own the place and that's what yeah. exactly and yeah. that's that's exactly what they did and that's where i feel, i i feel like cuz i i didn't i did my best to like kind of get educated on the subject but then mm-hmm. just researching about it I, i i the only the only starting point where that you can give to racism at that moment is that mm-hmm. moment where they they just stepped into your into our land and just decided that oh you know what like we'll act like we own here we'll act and dominate everybody that is not again like allied with us and the- i don't think they did that because they can't do that they can't I mean, go they, in- they, they can't you africa. know they can't they can they they came to africa and try and started tricking us into doing things that we would they, not be doing that's yeah. where you know what they 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 started by oh being like yo you know what first of all they tricked us into into selling them slaves because like you know what how black black kings used to have slaves but then respected mm-hmm. slaves not not as these like you would come do whatever you got to do and then go back to your house but when they need you you are here there but they, you were still a slave, slave and then at that point they came in and started uh, making sure that they would sell them slaves for nothing for things that are really having no worth compared to a human who human life and nothing has a has any type of balance with a human human life like a human life is everything no matter you black white or whatever else you just human that's it like your your life uh, is important and yeah they they did their best to actually make sure that they would they would trick us into doing things that we were not able to or supposed to do and yeah that's that's what got us here in the first place It's really tricky Malik because um you know being around uh, black Americans and and getting to know them uh, much um mm-hmm. I realized that actually they don't really know about their stories they don't really really uh, truly know about where they're from you know mm-hmm. but the government kept it that way they kept yeah. it, um they, they they made this um the they made their schools they, they made the program so they only teach their 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 people what mm-hmm. they know um, you know mm-hmm. that's, that's that's what they said about that's what this 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 tale that I really love like, says oh until until the lion will be able to write all the stories of the hunt will glorify the hunter mm-hmm. and that is exactly what is what is happening they are doing their best to make sure that whenever we learn about our history we are ashamed of it instead of being proud because they don't show us the the the, the 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 yeah the stories that actually makes us proud they show us all the stories when we were oppressed and where and where we were um and where we were not just diminished and just um being not being at our like not things that would get us proud you know what i mean and those things actually create something else it creates this anger that we have now it creates it creates rage because like when like when you are when you are born into a country that tells you you do not belong here mm-hmm. and the, the, a country that tells you oh you know what all this you are you you, you should be ashamed of your story mm-hmm. telling you telling you that systematically makes you it gives you like you, you are you are angry and you get to the point where oh you're like and this is what's happening now it's like it's, we got to the point where we could not hold it in no more and we are speaking up definitely well it's 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 about time we're in 2020 right now uh, we shouldn't even be sitting here discussing about racism this is a totally out of hand um racism should be like should not happen right now it should not it should have never happened it never be first place um but so Alec, um I want to ask you this question. I know of course you're not white, but you might have white friends of uh, being in Canada, um you know. So I I want to ask you this. What do you think about white privilege? That's a tricky question. You know how um being born in a country where you are you are in the majority group. Mm-hmm. You don't really think of those. You know what I mean? Like you are you are in the place where everybody is black so you 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 chill you don't really think about white privilege mm-hmm. but then the more you grow up and start getting into places into other countries into places where 
mm-hmm. you are not the you are not the majority you start realizing that not only that you are not the majority but you are the one that they don't want there because you're not you you are not like everybody else and what is everybody else white white mm-hmm. so yeah what is everybody else white everybody else is white because they made sure that from the beginning white people knew the power they had because of their skin color they made sure that when you are born a black white man you know that yo you know what i'm a black white man i have every i have like every chance to succeed like like your friend just said um he said um this guy said my like my most my biggest asset was that i am i was born white male and in america which mm-hmm. which says a lot about how actually white people see um you know, see themselves as yo you know what we dominate it. we domi- will be will be leading them and dominating them since uh, to the end of times and so right now they are actually getting to understand that yo you know what this thing is maybe maybe ending soon because we are done with we are not we these people are really done with giving us the peace that we that they used to give us because now we are educated because now um sources to like education is not close as it was before as you needed so much money like right now you could just go on on two searches on internet you can get whatever you want as information mm-hmm. so people are actually getting a walk and white privilege was brought up by an, in my idea in my my perception of thing because we were not educated enough mm-hmm. cuz they did not let us have the, have the education in like necessary mm-hmm. but now that we do have it i mm-hmm. feel like we are able to see um what is what is really happening and we are able to to know that yo you know like this is not this cannot just continue is yeah. that well yeah that what, what i'm going to add it on, on top of that is just that um it's really 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 annoying to say that and it's really uncomfortable to say it but i just feel like the only reason why we are where we at we we're at right now is just mm-hmm. the white people was they were more they were smarter than us they uh-huh. were as because they left their land came mm-hmm. to our land they mm-hmm. treat us us by mm-hmm. us some mirrors some mirrors some some, ob- some objects and, yeah. and for th- for those objects we were we would exchange um our our strongest people uh, yeah. to go into 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 slavery but mm-hmm. but the fact was that they were lying to us they would they would not tell us that these people are going to go ahead and be slaves they're going to be treated like um less than animals they're going to be um suffering they're going to be um dying you know mm-hmm. and they would divide the families they would they would make uh um kids grew up without father kids grew up without without they would even take our kids sometimes they yeah would, i mean they would take them they would take them i i saw i saw this picture this morning that really broke my heart of a black kid being in sort in some sort of cage surrounded by two kids and it told the whole the whole story of how these people were being put in a cage not not really a uh, a physical cage but in a mental cage that told them you know what you won't be able to do what these other people are doing because you are not like them you know what i mean because imagine growing up you 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 are born into a family where where's my dad they tell you oh he got killed by the police because mm-hmm. why because he's black where's my where's my where's my brother he's in jail because he's black also like you you grew you like you born seeing that and you're like this is my destiny I'm going to go to jail because I'm black and die because I'm black. And because of it, you do not you do not actually take the chances as you should be taking them because you feel like even though even if I want to take them, even though I want to take them, it will not take me so far as I I do want to go. You know what I mean? And yeah, it is yeah. it is um it is sadly what it is, but I feel like right now we have more chances and we we are supposed to be taking and seizing each one of them. we need to stand up for ourselves we need to fight this we need to make this change because mm-hmm. we are the new generation and they just fucked with the wrong generation that's what it is and we're not I mean, back and let them do we're not it is it is actually what that what that what that poster said mm-hmm. that you you fucked with the last generation that. like we 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 are the ones that like decide that yo we are done with it and we are actually going all the way in cuz we don't have anything to lose our ancestors lost it all like they've lost it all for us to be here today like they were not they even everything that we have right now 
they don't want us to have it, but they just see that we have it. It's not, it's not, it's not what they would love to have. It's not what they would like to have, but they just don't want, they, we just have it and they don't want us to have it. But you know what? This new generation, I have faith that this generation is the one that will actually end it. Cause we are, we are like, we're just not accepting it. Exactly. We can't just accept it. Well, I have one last question for you, Malik, which is actually, actually the subject of this live today. Uh, mm -hmm think about defunding the police and are you with that subject or uh, against the subject? I mean, I am with it. I am with defunding the police, mm -hmm. but I feel like even defunding the police itself would not make it, would not, would not actually make everything right. You know what I mean? Because yes, the police is oppressing us. The police is killing us. The police is robbing us. But one thing that is here and that we have to remember is that the police is a tool mm -hmm. to the system. Mm -hmm. So the system actually is above the police because the police receives orders. Mm -hmm. So before actually trying to defund the police, we should be making sure that the instance that overviews the police is one that is overviewed mm -hmm. by people that are ethically chosen, not just random people because if we choose random we'll choose white that's just like how it is every time that we say we'll choose randomly we'll choose white people well so, as to what you said this is not going to change everything that's for a fact but defunding the police would have a really 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 big impact in it the would. it just it let would. Me this real quick because um if we take that money um mm -hmm. um First of all, why would the pol the departments, police departments, need hundreds of millions of dollars? For what? It, it For just what? does not make any sense. And then second of all, um, if we take that money, uh, mm -hmm. the, the half of that money, not even all the hundreds of millions of dollars, but half of that money and put it into the hood, um, mm -hmm. don't you think the crimes are going to drop? Because kids will have way more ability to go to school. They would have cool. better, um, their teachers are gonna be well paid, which is gonna make them actually succeed. You know what I mean? They're gonna have more job opportunities. They're gonna have better health cares. And I just feel like- And just young people would get the funding that they need to actually go out, go out and make something, make exactly. something off of their lives. Because- Exactly. Did you watch the- I, that would definitely be life changing to all our because this whole situation is mm -hmm. people in general, but black men in particular. Mm -hmm. I feel like our black men in the hood mm -hmm. need help. They need help because they feel trapped. They don't mm -hmm. have enough money to actually go to col college. They don't have mm -hmm. enough money to do anything. And when mm -hmm. they go for jobs, they apply for jobs. Um, um, and you actually have an African name. You're fucked because they're not gonna. They're not gonna get you. They're not. They're not. They're not. Fucked. They need to find their way out, and for that, we need to put money in the hood so people can actually leave, so people can actually eat, so people can actually uh, do what they wanna do. Because mm -hmm. drop the crimes and gonna mm -hmm. and gonna drop um, police incarceration. Mm -hmm. Don't you think? I, I think so because I watched the I watched George Floyd's um, ceremonial the other day, mm -hmm. and this there's this one man I don't know who he is, but he said this he said this sentence that actually said it all. He said, um, "We we wanted to make to be in real estate. We wanted to work in those big buildings instead of being in the streets. We make, wanted to we wanted to go to schools. We wanted to, we yes. did." We, we made um, America what America is. America is, exactly. We started off the thing. Because if you were not here, because let's, let's say it, let's say it. First of all, who was here? The, the, the indigenous people, they were not able to keep up with the work that was done, that, that what white people wanted to be done. They brought white, white people from, that was in jails. They could, not, they could not keep up with the work. Who they brought us, and we kept it up for 400 years. We kept it up for 400 years. It means that we were the one that dug the foundations of it. You know after what I mean? The war, after the Civil War, um, we, they just took them as much Black people as possible. No matter if you're a kid, no matter if you're as much Black people as possible and put them in jail so that they can work and, and, and rebuild their, their economy. Their economy, exactly. That's what they exactly. 
exactly so that's two times that we do just like pushed off the whole thing and so like um this this he said we wanted to do all that but you had your your knee on our neck you did not let us do it mm-hmm. you did not allow us to you did not give us the chances to be able to just get out of the streets you know what i mean mm-hmm. we wanted to we wanted to go out of the street we wanted to to work in in corporates we wanted to to go to big schools but you did not allow you did not or you did not pick us you did not choose us why why do we have historically black colleges it makes no sense why because in the first place we were not treated right these college these college boards would see oh oh what's his name kwame oh no 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 he's black and just put it put him aside and and send him a nice letter about how we cannot accept you and then take take a kid that is white and that has even lower grade so me being black working my whole life to get to college but not being able to it it breaks me up me but it breaks up everybody that knows me and that knows that I'm a good that I'm someone that did all this and so it like it discourages every other person to go to school to 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 school and try to get an education and the education is the base of everything that we have on a boat because you can't build anything without education and they did not let us have that Well thank you so much Malik um this was really really educating um um I really appreciate that you took the time to actually educate yourself to the subject so that you can assist to this life today um there are uh, hundreds of people watching you today and mm-hmm. you said, uh, you 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 absolutely just uh, said really really good stuff and uh thank you so much I really encourage you to you know speak up as a black man uh not just let all the wrong stuff happen you know and and well thank you so much for supporting the BLM BLM movement as well um i've seen your your stories i've seen your post and and it's really really um it's really good thank you so much hey i want to say that i i am really proud of you jara cuz yeah, we know each other like we've been we i know you from from really long yeah it was really long and and that whole time what i can say is that you're someone really strong like everybody in here i'm telling you jaro is the strongest person i know like she's really strong and yo i'm really proud to see everything that you're doing i'm i'm proud to see you how you are you are like speaking up and you know what thank you very much for having me cuz like you you just gave me an opportunity to say what i wanted to say and yeah keep keep the good work up i am really proud of you and i feel like yeah i um yeah i wish you good luck Thanks for being here with us today Malik. Um I really appreciate you and have a wonderful day and keep fighting for 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 your community, keep fighting for your kind and 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 hopefully we will get what we deserve. Yeah, we will. We will. And even if we don't, we would snatch it. That's it. It's 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 getting it. It's getting it one way or another. We are getting it. That. Yo. Well, thank you so much. I'm going to go ahead and check on the second guest, uh the third guest okay. if she is online and uh, well, have a have a good rest of your day, Malik. Bye. All right, bye. Bye. All right, that was Malik Sek, you guys, a really really good friend of mine. We grew up together. Um we really really know each other and uh he lives in Canada right now. So This whole situation was really heartbroken for him as well. That's why I invited him to this live today and I cannot wait um for this generation to achieve what we need. We need to achieve what we what, what we need to get what we we deserve and we're going to get it by by this way or another. That's that's just it. So I'm going to go ahead and check on the third guest and see if she's if you're online, Yasin C say please let me know. Um and i'm just going to add you back let me see yes yeah, since you save your online please let me know uh send me a text message or whatever it is to let me know that you're online if not i'm going to go ahead and add the other guest right now Let me try and go ahead and add the other guest. Perfect. Our third guest is actually online and is going to be here very very soon. Hey. Hey, Jara. How are you? I'm good. How are you? 
I'm fine. I'm so happy to be here. And first of all, my English is not the best, but I'm trying because I think it's very important to talk mm -hmm. about all of this happening in this world and fight for our rights. Exactly. That's what. So I can tell that you're from Brazil and I'm really, really excited because I love Brazil and I love Brazil. So, um, so I would love to know how you feel about this situation that's going on in America, not just in America, but, but also in Brazil because I've heard about that young boy who died from the police. Um, and also there's just a lot of, uh, gender racism in Brazil as well for, um, uh, for trans, trans, transgender people and, and all those. I, I, I want to hear your, your version. I want to hear what you think about that. Um, honestly, I'm mentally worn out because I saw videos and read cases and let me completely devastated. But now I feel it's time to fight and show the people we need respect and we need be we need some things um people need to stop destroying and kill you mm -hmm. kill us because Killing our us. skin color we need mm -hmm. respect we and, definitely yes and brazil has so many problems because um we have a big problem with slavery here it was the country of the entire america continent that most enslaved blacks and when slavery was abolished they left all these people and without support and mm -hmm. um and when they searched for a place to live they started the favela and these people so and oh sorry i'm so nervous now <laughs> I'm good. oh my god sorry um okay But even today, these people are excluded from society and treated like no one else. It's very mm -hmm. rare you hear these people uh, have a chance to change their lives. And it's more sad because um, they not have a dream to change their life because they know they can't. And I think so sad we need to change this, you know. Sorry, I don't know you understand me. And you and you're actually doing really really good because it's really hard to to try and explain something you know that's actually uh, is is too too heavy for your heart and speaking in another language that's not your first language so what I want you to do right now is go ahead and say everything you just told me in in Portuguese so that our, our followers my followers right here who are from Brazil and who don't understand English would actually know what we're talking about okay um Primeiramente, eu disse que no Brasil nós temos muito, muitos problemas com as pessoas porque, além do racismo, tem todo o preconceito com as pessoas da favela. Essas pessoas não conseguem bons empregos, geralmente não conseguem ter estudos porque as pessoas não dão a chance de elas mostrarem isso, poderem viver esse sonho. E é muito triste isso, você ver crianças pequenas não tendo o sonho de mudar de vida, ter uma vida melhor. E isso realmente me deixa muito triste e muito nervoso. E eu, meu sonho mesmo é poder mudar isso e mostrar que todos nós merecemos direitos. Uau! Wow. I, I really wish I understood what you said. Um, that was really beautiful. But, um, oh, so, um, I want to go ask you this question um i know you live in brazil and there's a lot of races in brazil there's white yeah. people, black people brown people you know a lot of a lot of cultures are in brazil which which makes your country very beautiful by the way um yes and and ask you what do you think about um white privilege um i get so nervous about it because no matter how talent and how working we are We always need to uh, study 100% more than white people to That's get a job, to get a good study, to get a college. And it's not that, and it's not just that. Uh, for example, if there's a problem in establishment, um, the first to be pointed out as wrong is black, 
-hmm. and they don't give a chance um oh my god sorry you <laughs> to get... defend ourselves mm -hmm. we always be the wrong on the situation definitely we definitely are. Uh, and, and I just want to point something out because I know uh, about, I've heard about the LGBTQ uh, community. Um, 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 also, a lot of, a lot of uh, the people in Brazil are, are leaving some injustice, some racism, um, and they are in that community. So what, what can you tell to those people who wants to leave their, their nature, who wants to, who, who wants to be uh, who they are in general and, and, and are being killed for being a uh, part of the LGBTQ community. What can you say about that? Oh my God, sorry. Can you repeat this song? Is... <laughs> okay, so I'm saying the, how do you say, how do you say the LGBTQ in Portuguese? Uh -huh. LGBT. Uh, okay, uh, so LGBT. So, so those people who are in that community and who are being uh, uh, killed and, and, and tortured and, and just disrespected by people. And how do you feel about that? I feel so sad because people don't give a chance to others being loved and feel loved. Um, people... Oh my God, I'm so, <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead and say it in Portuguese. I have someone here with me who can help me translate. Anna, come here, go here. So I have Anna with me. Uh, she's right here. Hello. And so she's going to help. Hello. So you can go ahead and say it in Portuguese. Okay. Um, é muito chato o que acontece no mundo, porque as pessoas não têm liberdade para poder amar, para poder sentirem amadas e isso é uma coisa muito chata, porque eu acho que todo mundo tem direito de ser feliz e, e acontece muito... Oh my, oh my God, I'm so nervous, sorry. Oh, I'm prepared for all day for this and I can't talk. We don't have the freedom to like love who mm -hmm. we want or like be loved for just who we are. For who we like, are, yeah. Exactly. That's just that's that's exactly what it is. I mean, it's just sad to see people uh, being to wanting to be who they are and wanting to love who they want to love and not being able to because people are are judging them, people are killing them, people are fighting with them on the street or or treating them wrong, uh, which is which is not supposed to happen at all. So I have one last question for you. Um, okay. <laughs> Um, what would you say to the white people who are silent about the situation right now? Um, you're silent killing thousands of people. Because for me, um, a people, for me, people who are silencing all this situation mm -hmm. uh, agree with all this impunity mm -hmm. and all these horrible things happen this word right now and I'm yes the silent killing us killing black people killing LGBT key a <laughs> people and we need talk we need fight mm -hmm. we need to show our voice and our strength we definitely need thank you so much Smailan it was pleasure having you in this live today um uh you really speak up and and, and it's really really good i'm really really proud of you because uh, it's just really hard to speak english but you're doing <laughs> thank you and and thank you so much for being part of this um you're black i am black we understand each other um it is not easy at all but for sure we are gonna get to where we want to be because we deserve it we deserve um. it so we thank deserve all. Thank you so much. Thank you for using your voice and use your platform to talk about these important things. I love you so much. You are love one of my big inspirations. And sorry for now. Good. You're good. You did. You did really. You did very, very good. I'm proud of you. Thank you for being here today. I cannot wait to speak with you later on on DM. And, and, and thank you so much. And, and have a good rest of your day. Okay, thank you. Bye. Bye.
Love you. Love you too. So that was Maylon Silva, you guys. He is from Brazil. He is a really, really uh, a nice guy. Um, um, I, I haven't really, uh, you know, uh, known him for a long time, but the short time we've been talking, um, he, 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 he just, he's really sweet and he's really smart. And I thank him for joining the live today. So our fourth um, guest today, uh, Yasin Sise, if you're online, please uh, go ahead and, and, and call call me. Um, yeah. All right, you guys, I think our fourth guest today is not here yet. Um, I don't know where she is, but she is not here yet. Um, um, I, I might go ahead and, and, you know, and just tell you about this documentary that I, I really, I watched and I'm still watching it actually because I didn't finish it yet. Um, my sister put me into it. It's called Thir 13th on Netflix. Um, you, if you are black, and even if you're not black, if you want to learn about, about history, want to know what's, what, what, what really happened, uh, if you want to know about where we're from and what we we've been through go ahead and watch that documentary if you guys are sensitive you better not watch it because it is very true it is very um um it is very very real and yeah it's just very emotional and sad sad so you guys just need to to understand that when we say black lives matter we do not say that other black uh, other lives doesn't matter that's not what we're saying and it's really annoying to see how people transform stuff into every single lives matter as well or not just black lives matter da -da 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 -da. like no you got to understand that when it's time for something it's time for something specific that's what we're talking about we've never ever ever said that other lives that then does not matter and that black lives is the only life that matter we never said that but it is time for everybody to affirm that black lives matter because we've never been in a position to say to say that our lives matter because you've never shown us that we've been tortured killed um we we, we worked for nothing we, we we worked for free we built america we made america what america is today because after the civil war um they took as many black people as possible and put them into jail for no freaking reason at all sometimes very very small crimes just because they needed us to build their country their lazy ass white ass I don't I don't even want to say this because it is not it is just not why we're here today but y'all need to affirm that our lives matter and it does matter and we need to show people that black lives matter by taking racism down by helping black people in America because we did not leave our land to come to America because we wanted to no y'all came to our land took us brought us in america made us work made us build your country and now you want to treat us like garbage you want to kill us you want to put us in jail for no reason and mind you that video of george floyd that video of george floyd was in on a daylight it was bright day he killed a black man in front of people filming him and he did not have this much of pd has his his hand in his, his pocket and just was casually killing a black man on the street in a daylight that is not acceptable we are never gonna let that go we're gonna stand up and fight for that every single day until we see that black lives matter for everybody for those people who are not speaking, who are not talking about this situation, who are totally transparent, um, I wish this happened to your kids or happens to somebody that's related to you. You would feel the way we feel today. Um, 
I actually have no words for those people. I actually unfollowed all the people who I was following and haven't said anything about what is happening to us and to my community. One last thing I want to add to this live is that I am totally with the subject defunding the police. We need to defund the police. They're, we're giving too much money to the police departments and they don't need that much money because they're literally, every, nobody knows where that money is going. We do not know. And that is not, the, that is not it is not as important as, as the police departments are not as important as, as healthcare facilities. They are not. So we need to take some of that money that we're giving to the police departments into some facil uh, facilities that need it, healthcare facilities or job opportunities in the hood or schools. Because mind you, if you guys go in the hood, we don't have, they don't have the same schools as, as in Beverly Hills or or as in in wealthy neighborhoods we don't have those kind of kind of school and that's why our people do not have as much chance as other people to succeed in life because we don't have all the opportunities we need so please you guys um, go ahead and sign all the petitions about defunding the police as well as all the petitions that are asking for the death row for the police, uh, the, the, the police showman, showman guy who killed George Floyd, because we need justice. We do need justice. And I wanna thank everybody who uh, assisted to this live today. It's a pleasure for me to, to, to sit here and, and, and talk about uh, stuff that are actually helping my community stand up and helping my community um, um, into the right way. Thank you so much to all the people who contributed into this live. It was very, very educating to myself and to some, to all of y'all. And um, I just want to say that the BLM movement is not done. It is not over. We are going to stand up and fight until we have what we want and what we deserve. Thank you so much. This was the first episode, you guys. I didn't want to go too deep, but I actually did. But whatever. <laughs> the second episode is going to be next week. Mm, Monday is Monday's episode is not going to happen, you guys. I'm sorry. But on Friday, we're going to be doing the second episode, you guys. Thank you so much. Take care of yourself. Um, take care of your loved ones. And, and, and see you guys next week.